Show. And joining us now, John Damon, the CEO of Canopy Children's Solutions. John, good to see you, my friend. Gerard, always good to see you, my friend. Yes, sir. So May is Autism Acceptance Month. Uh, that's coming up. That's and uh, so I- explain to our audience why that's so relevant to your organization. Well, actually, I believe it's right now. Okay. In April. Okay, I my bad. A- yeah, yeah. And right. then May will roll into mental health. Okay. Um, okay, and that's so you're, you're, you're You're exactly right. Got gotcha. so, yeah, this, I think the history on it, I think it started maybe in the early 70s, 72 or so, when we, in fact, here's a little historical nugget most people do not know. The very first case of autism was diagnosed from a gentleman right here from Forest, Mississippi. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Donald Triplett. And ha- we featured him on the show last year. Did I don't know you if you know. Really? Yeah, he, we, had, we he, had a whole deal on that. Oh, man, that is fascinating. Amazing. It's fascinating. So, so each, each starting in the early 70s, the month of April had been set aside to kind of, uh, you know, lift the awareness of, of autism and make sure that we're, um, you know, in this inclusive discussions that we have, every kid has the right to be included in this, being a success story. And sure. so, uh, we're excited to kind of bring, bring a spotlight on these amazing kids that, uh, just have so much potential to change the world. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, explain for the benefit of our audience, John, exactly how Canopy is connected to that. So um, a little over 10 years ago, we were in our strategy discussions, and we were watching the prevalence rates of autism rise. And um, you look at the last you know, two and a half decades or so, the prevalence rates have gone from one in 1,000 to now we're at one in 44 children. All right. We, that that trend line was moving up when we were having this discussion about 10 years ago. Um, and we had our board, as you well know, Gerard, uh, amazing brain trust that we have. We reflected on this stewardship responsibility that we have in Mississippi as the largest provider for children in behavioral health. And we said, you know, if, if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? Yep. And we said, let's step into this space to try to make a difference for children with autism. At that moment in history, there was no insurance for these children. Um, There was no way for them to really grab access to care. Um, And so we took it on as a mission um, to both uh, clinically respond uh, from a public policy to respond. Um, And, man, I'm so excited. We got the insurance uh, bill passed to require insurance for children. We got the caps lifted because it was set at age eight. They capped out, got that lifted. And now we're trying to to do the right battles to get the rates right. Um, But we stepped into this because it's a, you know, we have a 110 year history. This is our 110th birthday. And we have a 110 year history of whatever that vexing challenge is for kids in the state of Mississippi. Uh, Canopy has stepped up to provide a solution. And that was a particular discussion that we said we need to provide a solution for kids. Why do you think, John, the, uh, the, the, the incidence, the uh, occurrence of autism and the di- diagnosis of mm. that, why has that increased so much? Well, I, I think the biggest portion of that variance would certainly be our awareness and a label that we can have now. And we've placed it on a spectrum, autism, you know, um, spectrum disorder. Um, you know, many of the kids we maybe grew up with and, and went on the playground with and kind of stayed to themselves and ate at the lunch table, didn't really want to interact with the other kid. We just thought they were a little, a little different. Well, now we have a label, and we, we, we know if they have a deficit in their verbal abilities, for example, or their social skill abilities, or they have some kind of repetitive behavior that they like to do, we, we're now classifying better. So I think that's a big portion of the variance okay. is, is we're better at, at diagnostic and, and classifying. And then I think there's something else. And the science to date, we don't, we can't put our finger on it yet. We do believe genetics has a role. Um, you see that in higher prevalence rates among, say, twins. Uh, you see that um, uh, particularly, uh, you know, um, identical twins, but but even uh, maternal. Um, and so it, it, the 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 big kind of you know hypothesis is is it is it kind of a diathesis model where biology kind of loads the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger. Okay. Um, is there something where that you're predisposed uh, biologically, but then maybe something else 
happens externally, you know, whether there's all kind of theories, you know, is it mom gets um, a virus at a certain point in the trimester of the Hmm. development. So there may be a biological predisposition, but now we have this environmental, you know, kind of thing that pulls the trigger. There's there's different theories. Uh, You know, the big one that ran for a long time was, is it um, vaccinations? Uh, That was a big uh, piece. And to date, the, the science just doesn't bear that out. Um, so that is still a highly researched. We participate in others in large um, studies to try to understand that better, but that is still a mystery. So uh, how has the approach to treatment changed? It's obviously uh, evolved quite a bit. It's yeah. way more sophisticated, way more effective yes. than it ever has been, uh. and, and you guys have been on the forefront of that. Uh, and, and so what we know, you've shared this with me many times, it does work. It does work. I mean, that is the really good news. It works. And what we also know about it working is the earlier you get to it, it works better. And the higher dose you give, it works even better. And so there is one um, strong winner, empirically supported treatment. It's called ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis. That is the gold standard treatment uh, for kids. And what we know, and we do ABA, but we've also done research and published on the fact that if you do ABA earlier and a higher dose level, okay. you get significantly better outcomes. Hmm. So then what's the key there, John, to, to the early diagnosis? Is Does this usually fall upon uh, the parents, the guardians, the teachers? Where, where does that usually come from? So we have found moms have a really good mom sense. Yep. They know when something's different. God kind of made them that they, way, didn't God he? really <laughs> wired them to have that super spidey sense to know something's yeah. off. Yeah. And uh, the challenge has been getting that early diagnosis. We just don't have enough folks trained in that kind of diagnostic piece to get it trained earlier. Sadly, most people, it's not till they're like four. Yeah. But we can actually diagnose at two, uh, even earlier. Our early intervention clinic runs from 18 months to eight years of age. Okay. So if you've got the right pediatrician on board, uh, psychologist, developmental pediatrician, and you can get that early diagnosis, oh, the trajectory of their life is different. Um, so we, we need more early identification. Uh, but all the brain research says when you take advantage of that early brain development, that neuroplasticity of the brain, those little neural pathways can be developed in amazing yeah. ways. Um, just got to catch them earlier as we, as we can. Wow. That, that is amazing. And I, and I know the staff is so dedicated and one of the things you guys do such a great job of, John, is uh, is is highlighting the success, success stories, mm. and um, it, it's so gratifying and rewarding to see that. It's, it's feel good because you, you totally. you're seeing literally a, a transformation in a person's life that will affect them for the rest of their lives. Totally, and that's what this is all about. It's what it's all about. And I tell you, Gerard, there is. There are few feelings you can have in the human experience than the one that comes from the mom running up to you with tears in their eyes. This has happened many a times. They find, they'll usually see my pen. Yeah. Uh, you know, you 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 work at Canopy. Yeah. Say, yeah, I do. And <laughs> they say, oh my, God. and they'll just start crying. Yeah. Said so my kid could not say a word. My kid couldn't tell me they were hungry, what they wanted to eat, if they wanted to go outside, if they needed to go to the bathroom. They they could not speak. And now, and they'll often even play a tape or something like, uh, you know, them singing on the way home from, from you know, coming back from, from treatment or something, uh, singing along, having a conversation. Um, I think of this amazing story, I think you heard, Gerard, of, um, you know, a kid who came in early, got the early intervention, um, I want to say they were three maybe when they came out to look, look that up. Um, went through our program for, I guess, about a year, year and a half. Uh, st- started kindergarten this year in the local public schools, unassisted, no special help. Um, and not only did they do that, at the preschool graduation, has a speaking role oh, in wow. front of all the parents and grandparents Speaks Now, this is a kid that we had video of them spinning around, rolling in the curtains, rolling on the ground, unable to engage, can't look you. Um, and now 
And here's the awesome part. This kid to this day doesn't know he has autism. Oh, that is fantastic. And moreover, the teachers don't even know. This kid is completely integrated into the school and is doing fantastic. Well, like we said, it works. And it works because of the dedication and the commitment of the great team at Canopy under your, under your leadership. And as you said, a, a, a brain trust of a board. Oh, uh, it's incredible. Best. The best. Um, so yeah. humbled, man. Absolutely. John, always good to see you, and sure thanks are. for Thank sharing you. that and calling attention to April is Autism Acceptance yes, Month. Yeah. May is mental health. Mental health. Okay. Absolutely. Appreciate that. John, Absolutely. good to see you. Thank thanks. you, brother. Yeah. Appreciate it. Middays, we'll take a break right here. We got uh, some tickets to give away.